10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Falcon 9 is pitching down range. As you can see, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from the historic launch pad 39A at Kennedy Terminal Space Center, carrying our stack of Starlink satellites and two ride shares into orbit. We throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees during vehicle supersonic. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees during ascent, so slowing the vehicle down helps during that short period. Max Q. All right, there we heard the call out that we reached max Q. In about a minute, we're gonna have three events happening back to back. First will be the main, will be main engine cutoff, or as you'll hear it called out, Miko. This is where all nine M1D engines shut off and slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, stage separation. As the name suggests, this is where the first stage separates from the second stage, with stage one starting to make its way back to Earth for landing on our started. While stage two continues its journey with the third event, SES-1 or second engine start one. This is where MVAC will light up and begin to propel the second stage along with the Starlink and two rideshare satellites into orbit. So just a few seconds ago, we heard the call out that MVAC chill has begun. That's the same thing as what I described prior to liftoff for the M1D engines. We flow a little bit of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pump of the MVAC engine, uh, helping to prepare the prop system for that super cold fluid to flow through. So there we can see that the engine Stage separation confirmed. All right, so on the left-hand side of your screen, we got the first stage and the second, on the right-hand side, the second stage, and there we heard call out MVAC ignition. We can see that nozzle begin to develop a lovely orange glow as Earth rotates in the background. On the left-hand side, we got first stage deploying the grid fins in preparation for the drone ship landing. In just a few seconds, we're going to have fairing deploy. Love that view of MVAC. And there's our first view inside fairing the payload fairing. Uh, there we have visual and uh, call out there that fairing separation has occurred. As a reminder, we will be attempting to recover those fairing halves today with our recovery ship, Sheila Bordelon. And of course, we're gonna be recovering the first stage with our drone ship, utilize of you for today's recovery attempt. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. As stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to wake, make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin 1D engines will reignite. This helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. We do this at the last minute to conserve as much fuel as possible. If you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Kennedy Space Center's pad 39A. On the right side of your screen, you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 Stage 2 as it delivers our Starlink and rideshare payloads to orbit. 
On the left, a stage one is cruising back to our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, in the Atlantic Ocean. Our Starlink satellites are in LEO, or low Earth orbit, at around 550 Both kilometers. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Most satellites are around 36,000 kilometers in altitude at geo or at geostationary orbit. When the satellites are further from Earth, the round trip data time between the user and the satellite, it's also known as latency, is much higher, resulting in poor performance for activities like video calls and online gaming. about a minute out here from entry burn. On the left hand see the first stage as it cruises in. Uh, Falcon 9 is equipped uh, with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage. Uh, this use, it, the, grid, the stage uses nothing but the grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth. Earth. They orient the rocket during re-entry and guide the rocket during descent. Occasionally, you'll also see some white puffs. These are nitrogen gas bursts for attitude adjustment and control. Now we're about 20 seconds out from entry burn. As a reminder, this is a three engine burn that is meant to slow the first stage as it hits the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn is started. And stage one entry burn shut down. And we just had a confirmation of stage one entry burn cutoff. Now we're about 60 seconds away from landing. And at this point, the vehicle is traveling around 900 miles per hour. This really puts the deceleration into perspective. In the span of less than a minute, we will have slowed from twice the speed of a jet all the way down to zero as the rocket lands. There are a couple of the events scheduled to happen in close proximity here. Stage one landing burn will begin and will finish its burn in about 25 seconds. And then stage two, two up in space will stop firing about 50 second, 15 seconds later, at which point we'll enter the first coast period. So prepare for that in about 45 seconds. Stage one is transonic. Got a great view of both the first stage re-entering into the Atlantic and stage two as it continues on a nominal orbit. Stage one landing burn has started. Got a start of stage one. Turn as a reminder, ends. We may lose coverage of the vehicle as it attempts to land on the drone ship. Landing legs have deployed. Landing leg deployed. Stage two FTS is On the left hand side of the screen, got a beautiful view of a successful landing. This marks our 84th successful recovery of an orbital class rocket and the sixth recovery of this particular booster. Tico. And there we had second engine cutoff one or Seco one.